This episode of Vic's Basement is brought to you by EB Games. Support us by buying your video games at EB Games. Welcome to my basement, everybody. But I have to keep it down because it's coffee Morning. talk and yeah, not Jesus everybody's done. ready for this. I'm a little hungover. Oh, and yes. Also, coffee today brought to you by JJ Beans. Yeah. Thank you, JJ Beans. Is that your favorite? Uh, well, that's your, the one closest to the office. Yeah. I mean, your Americanos and Assholes <laughs> podcast. Uh, it's one of the favorites for yeah. sure. Yeah. You should start watching. It's a good I, show. I've watched it. Yeah, but I don't drink coffee you're, anymore. Are you jealous work. that you're not on that show? Don't no, do it's that. Okay. It's what okay. if you just He's smelled not the Americanos? He doesn't drink coffee anymore. I, what if you did a tea show? Oh, no, I, I do like the taste. I do miss. Uh, but uh, we don't talk about coffee on this show. We no. talk about... We uh, what a weekend! Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. I can't believe it. It is episode four of Wait. season five. We're almost halfway through this season, guys. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, I just need to say something. Go ahead. It's May the 4th, and we should say happy May the 4th. Do you want to... Everyone. I don't. Do you want to say May, May the 4th be with you. With you. I, I, I was waiting for one of these. <laughs> uh, may the fourth be with you, everybody. Need one of these? I can't. Oh yeah. Uh, no, we we are talking Let's about. Uh, Let's have our morning oh, treat. Oh, sure. Alyssa made some stuff for us. Wow. This is well, from uh, Restero- right Westeros. Right? No. Really? These are refined sugar free. Oh my god. Because last week we did have donuts, but you wouldn't have had those. But these, right. I just love eating cookies out of a cookie jar. Oh I love god, the jar that they're these in. These are breakfast these? cookies. So these are um, awesome. I just I posted the recipe to my Instagram, but I modified the recipe that I. Vic, do you want to eat one of these out of my butthole? <laughs> Maybe later. <laughs> so, uh, listen, this is also. Do you want to say the recipe for this, or can uh, people get it, it online? Well, it's just on my Instagram, but I just took it from a recipe book and I modified it to um, have more coconut. These are amazing. And they're just breakfast they, cookies. They feel healthy. Yeah, they And are. they taste terrific. Yeah. They taste like something. Filled with protein and life. That, uh, Tyrion would eat while he was drinking his wine and someone yeah. was sucking his cook. <laughs> <laughs> but he can't do that right now. He can't get he's it up on a for boat, anyone. He's all tied up. But yeah. well, you know, the list, listen, this is also week four of my Game yeah. of Thrones beard. Mm-hmm. Not quite Hodor caliber, but moving in the right direction. And I'm pretty proud of do myself. You... Although there's a bit more gray than I thought there would be. <laughs> <laughs> so are you not, o- well. you're not okay good. with it? Or are you? I'm okay with it. Uh, well, we've discussed doing the Just for Men gel. Yeah, we're not doing that. We'll talk about it on your podcast. How men should color their beards. Own their own the gray. So man. Last night there was. Own it. Listen, let's just get into it, okay? And get mm-hmm. on with our day. We yes, got a lot sure. to do today. Yeah. Two deaths last night, but I can't. I don't think there've been any less climactic or exciting deaths in, in than con- these two. In consequence, I could deaths. care less yeah. about the. I liked Grey Worm, and I liked the other guy. I didn't even know that guy's name, Sir Barristan. Yeah. They're both dead. The whole show ends with this Excuse very me. dramatic fight, and I just thought. I don't really care about these guys. I don't care I like if they're Grey dying. Worm. And it looks like, yeah, I said that already. I yeah. like Grey Worm too. Yeah. I, and the fight happened and they're dying and it's over and that's the end of it. And I'm just like, I, I don't know. I don't know what this, I don't know where we're going this season. Are now. we cer- certain that Grey Worm is dead? We're starting with the end, so ma- major spoiler. <laughs> if <you're laughs> he's alive or dead, it yeah. doesn't matter. It's supposed, this is the big dramatic moment from. Uh, episode four, yeah. yeah, and I felt like it had no drama for me. Yeah, because at the end, it's like they need to get, they need to start killing off people. Of course, that's what they do in the show. Too many but people. these, yeah, but these guys are just. I guess I I have the same affection for both of them. I don't really care too much about them, but every time I see them, I'm like, yeah, you're all right. So when he has a when they're very, I don't really know who you are. You're all right. You're okay. Like you're you're okay in this scene. I'm okay with you there. So when he had that moment, so when Sir Barristan had that moment with um, Daenerys. Daenerys yeah. Before he went off, and she's the like, "Hey, go sing ticking. me a song for go go sing a song for me." Like, oh, okay, yeah. well, he's gonna go die now because <laughs> yeah. we had that moment, this wonderful moment where he tells a story about her brother, who is not the brother that got um, well, the gold poured on. Yeah, his gold face. poured on yeah. his face. It couldn't have been him, right? Because no, it wasn't he, him. It was it was their other brother. Yeah, who that we never songs met. And yeah, we never met them. And so, if you read the books. Then you probably know who all these characters are. But you know, if you think back to last season, you think about the mountain fighting Oberyn yeah. and poking his eyes out and how exciting that was and how that much it hurt your heart. That was an episode four, though. That was... I know it was an episode four, yeah. for sure. You're yeah. right. And so we have to have, I guess, some soft deaths well, early in the season and then ramp it up as we go along. <laughs> yeah, because I think the drama was the, the little moments, you know, the, the, the cool throwback to early in season one. We even see Ned Stark in, a, in the... Uh, uh, the sort of recap bit before it aired on HBO last night. Oh, they I didn't sh- watch that. Yeah, it was cool. They showed the uh, the early days of uh, uh, of Ned basically. Ned Stark. Oh, yeah, nice. be- being at the statue of his uh, his 
uh, his dead wife or his dead sister. sister. I can't, yeah, his dead sister. And because uh, wives and sisters interchangeable on this show. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> for the Lannisters. <laughs> yeah, but that was interesting. But then we see, that. yeah, Sansa and uh, Littlefinger talking at that same statue, and she's back in Winterfell, and right. she's got to deal with this uh, this Rams grotesque Snow, yeah. yeah marriage that she doesn't want to yeah. do. And then the other flip of that was Jon Snow having to concede to his enemies and having to sign papers giving them power. Yeah. And he's having to kind of understand what it means to be, uh, you know, a real leader. And he also has to push off the uh, yeah, advances of that, one of the, that hot lady. M Melisandre, hot lady. yeah. That, I mean, <laughs> yeah. That's, the hot lady. And that's a tough moment. And as a man, when you're watching that kind of moment, and even if, if it's in a movie or a TV show, you're like... Well, what would I do here? <laughs> and having a private moment, and you kind of go off on your own in your mind, and uh, and and he does the right thing, we and I love that he does the he well he touches one Whoa. of the boobs, yeah. where she grabs his hand and, and I think yeah. puts it on. She says yeah. she puts it in her vagina. She says, yeah. "Can you feel my heartbeat?" No. And that he, was that was before. And that, it was it was sexy. I don't like that lady. I've never liked her. I love her. I like her. I know you guys like her. Yeah. Okay, these two like. I don't like her. Yeah. Uh, but I was glad Jon Snow once again proved himself such a good dude. And yeah. I love when there are no good Ygritte. dudes. She's no Ygritte. Well, he's no. still heartbroken. Ygritte was the best. What a, one of the coolest characters on the show. Yeah, yeah. she's gone yeah. now. Yeah, I know. But that was so crazy how she... I don't know how the Red Woman... I don't understand her power. I don't understand her magic. I don't. I don't know. She's with the devil. Vagina. Well, yeah. I mean, she's all heat. She's all heat. So the fact that Jon Snow, it's freezing up there. The fact that he turns down. Some, I'm sure her vagina felt nice. Some warm poontang. Yeah. Is it okay if I use the word poontang? I'm okay with it. Maybe know. some people. Vic doesn't like it. Vic doesn't um, like it. Will the FCC call us? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happens. So no, but it just proves how I don't know. He just keeps proving every single episode how good and how righteous he is. And yeah. Um, how he, he is. is just, he is supposed to be the guy on the if, Iron Throne. It should be that's him. Right. Over anyone else. He says, My home him. is Castle Black now. I yeah. love that. You know, it's like, like unbelievable. Trying to, he's trying to do the right thing every yeah. step of the way, and I love that feeling. And it's those characters in the show the pure characters, the good characters, the yeah. clean hearts, the clear minds. Mm -hmm. You haven't read the books, though. No. And the I, only one I know who's read the books is Ben Silverman. And none of us have read the book. No. And I really feel like they're going to they're gonna waste Jon Snow this year. No. This I, I, I mean, they're setting him up to be so... Oh, to be the next episode. Yeah, he's like a guess. god. Just, and well, and they're going to... They're gonna, I think they're going to ice him. No pun intended. No, all right. Just, that's, well, I, yeah. All right. That's, that's just... That's the thing. First time Vic's I've ever said ice. Season <laughs> four icing theory. <laughs> yeah. Vic so, has one. But we should say, this is, the, this is now... We're all with everyone else now because we did see the first four episodes forever yeah. ago. We're we've awesome. been re-watching them for this. So we're all caught up. And so everything is a mystery now moving forward. Now for Game of Thrones us. coffee talk, real time, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the thing is, it's like... I did watch this episode a couple of times, yeah. and I watched all the first four episodes a couple of times. I mean, I had all four episodes in my house. Am I not going to watch them a couple of times? Of course I am. Yeah. I love this show. And honestly, these first four episodes are a little slack. Mm -hmm. And I felt like last night was another slack episode. It yeah. doesn't, it's not that exciting. Everything that's happening is very subtle and very quiet so far. And I just feel like I feel this show should be getting more muscular, should be getting... Just something tangible and real and exciting should happen, and, and it's just all small council meetings so far. I don't know, man. I think one of the strongest moments in the whole series so far is Stannis talking to his daughter, and oh, that happened God. in this episode, and it shows the virtue of the man. It shows yeah. that he, uh, you know, has a righteous it's quality. It's right at the top. You know, it's, it's an incredible scene, and the daughter is an amazing she actor. Is she is so, so good. Her name is Shireen. Yeah. She suffers from some sort of thing that I think Marissa suffered from, uh, and it's called grayscale. And it's, it's a little like the... Did what, you give it to her? I, <laughs> we worked too closely he, together. He gave me this wooden doll that had my favorite colors on it, and I pressed it to my cheek. But Vic's right, that scene is great. For it, sure. it, it's so strong because, you, you know, in the call... And I, I keep seeing it on HBO, too, and one of the cool things is they call back to his previous things. There's so much happening, right? Yeah. And they call back to the advancements of the Red Witch on Stannis and he was saying no I'm married I don't want that I, you know oh do they yeah and uh, uh, and, and so it was uh, cool to see a couple of blasts of this guy that's really trying you, you feel like he there's no way he can be king compared to all of these super oh, yeah, strong no. characters like a loser right? but yeah. I, I'm starting to feel like wait a second I mean the guy has got some really cool innate power and if man. he can pull I don't know what's going to happen because I haven't read the books but if he can pull Jon Snow 
with him. Mm -hmm. I think there is a tremendous surge of, of virtue. This is the first time in the show, the entirety of the show, that he's done anything good yeah. or interesting. And maybe he did rebuff the Melo Sounders efforts early on when she was trying to seduce him. Yeah. But it, this was a really, like, that was the first time I started seeing everything from his point of view. Mm -hmm. and, and it took a long time to get there. And I yes. just always thought of him as a bad character, a character who had n nothing good to do for this world. And now I feel like maybe he does. I yeah. don't know. He had a great moment with his daughter. And it doesn't, and that's all it takes is a little moment like that it's to true. put me on board with that guy. Oh, so yeah. Compare that, that to the Ramsey family, right? Oh, my God. And, and also, you know, the... The other thing that with Stannis is that his confidant, the I forget the warrior guy that he's always with. The Onion Knight. Yeah, he is always so much stronger than him in every yeah. conversation and every confrontation. He's always seen. He always seems to fall on the the side of uh, uh, logic mm -hmm. and and uh, you know being correct. Well, right. And so that's a strong. That's a weak position to put Stannis in. But I'm, sure. I'm starting to feel his strength. And, yeah, and because that's, you were always on his side, and then you always felt like he was being manipulated by Melisandre. Everything, yes. every decision that he made was ma manipulated by this woman. She was totally Lady Macbeth. Him. Yeah. And he now uh, you see him separating from her and just seeing her mm -hmm. as the woman and separating that and and even like she has her own game she's working her own angles yeah. the fact that she wanted to keep it a secret from Stannis when she was with Jon Snow and how like evil that was. What if it's Melisandre and Daenerys as the final two? I don't know because I don't know if she I don't think Melisandre wants to be a queen mm -hmm. I think she just wants to be. The, the bringer, she wants everyone to believe in the Lord of Light and the fight between life and death, and well, she know, has her own agenda. Let's talk about action from last night, and of yeah. course the show ends with a big piece of action, a whole set piece, and everybody dies, yeah. and blah, blah, blah. But I think the best action in the show is the scene with Jamie and Bronn yeah. when they're on the shores That's of awesome. Dorne, and uh, they have a fight, and Bronn just leaves Jamie on his own. He's like, that one should be slow enough for you. <laughs> that was an amazing piece. Yeah, great moment, and that, I love the camera incredible. angle there. You yeah. see the guy that, that uh, Jamie's trying to fight, and he's yeah. a big guy, and so he starts fighting, and then he, you know, I keep thinking, I haven't thought that he has a gold hand. Yeah. Yeah. How heavy would a goddamn gold hand be, yeah. but he uses it in the fight and he yeah. stops the sword blow. That's all exciting By and so much it. more exciting than, than the climax and, at the end. And you see the click in his mind too yeah. in that scene. It's like, wait a second, yeah. I have another weapon right here. <laughs> so now I, I feel like Jamie Lannister is going to be a much more interesting physical character yeah. for the rest of the season if they don't cut off his other hand. Yeah. But, but he's an emotional moment when he's talking about his niece, he says, and then, yeah. and then they have this, how do you want to die? How he's talking about how you want to die, how you want to go out. Yeah. He wants to be in the arms of the woman he loves like oh well does she want that yeah. like ooh do you think he still loves her yeah, yes I think he does yeah. for sure. and that's yeah. why he's doing this crazy errand because of her because he's kind of feeling like her spin away from him yeah. and he's trying to get back in her good graces the other great moment that Jimmy has last night is when they're going by Tarth yeah. and he thinks of Brienne that's and he's looking he off loves. and he smiles no, no he doesn't love her no. No, no no way No. because she's too big for him no. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried to love big women before it, it's very challenging like where does yeah. where's that? Is that part there? There is, um, there is a book out there that's called Why Men Love Bitches. Yeah. And uh, my mom my <laughs> mom wanted me to get the book. <laughs> I wrote it. My mom wanted me to get the book. She, I'm like, Mom, that's enough. But uh, no, I just feel like that's Jamie Lannister's position. He he's just a man that loves a bitch. Well, <laughs> she, I think you love whoever you love, and sometimes they're bitches, and sometimes they're anyway. That she, that's she, for our other we dating show. Talk, that we didn't talk about Cersei because she is such a bitch. Oh, I yeah. love her, but oh, she's yeah. being such a bitch right now. I thought she was being righteous and good and actually um, putting in this this high priest. But she's only doing it to get of rid course. of. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh my and, God, the Tyrell. Yeah, and I disagree with your comments on this this what? show not being action packed and exciting because that's the other really amazing element is that the 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 power of this crazy church is growing within I the confines of Westeros. I would rather those Rose. two guys stayed alive last night and not have seen that scene. Yeah. And it makes me think a little bit less of the show that they felt like they needed. This was the way we're going to end with this big thing. But I like I I, feel I, like and they I don't to like write all the, the old guy out because guess who's coming well, back? Just make him go yeah. away, right? That's but just true. make them go yeah. away, though. You don't have to write them out. They make people go away all the time for long TV. periods of time. No, well, not on this show. This, all the rules of TV don't apply to, to Game of Thrones. Except in this one case, and I can kind of understand
understand the logic behind it. <laughs> the, I, I read an interview with the guy that plays, I forget the guy's name, I mean, he's so inconsequential, I forget. But I read an interview with the, with the actor who plays Sir Barrister, yeah. and he was surprised because he's read up into the books himself, and he thought mm. he was going to be... the same thing I read this morning. Yeah, I was on EW. Yeah, yeah. And he thought he was going to be in the thing for a long time, and then... Uh, That's no. such a tough thing. I wouldn't, if I were in the show, I don't think I would read the books, because then maybe I'd get this false sense of confidence, <laughs> thinking that my character's going to last forever, mm -hmm. but they can kill me off. And I think that's the thing. Like, I think at the very start, we came to the fork in the road. Are we just going to watch the show and then read the books or read the books? Yeah. Then I, I just chose show. I didn't, I'm yeah. not reading the books, but I, I do enjoy listening to Ben Silverman sure. yeah. talk about the books and how important they are well, to him. It's kind of like the Walking Dead show and the comics. They're both so different and they're both mm -hmm. so rewarding after a time. I mean, Walking Dead's you know, a little more... Uh, uh, routine and they sort of stick with a, a formula that gets a little tiresome but now they're back because it's such a long drawn out character study and the book is just so brutal and intense and, and mm -hmm. dour mm -hmm. um, but it's it's a uh, you know monthly so it's not paced yeah. the same way I do feel like uh, the scenes with uh, the, the High Sparrow and Cersei last night yeah. I've watched them I've watched this episode almost three times probably and I don't I don't really understand what is going on in that moment, and I don't this like is the John. And we talked about this. Yeah. We talked about this last week. You weren't here, but uh, the Jonathan Price, who's yeah. a great actor, yeah. I feel like he's such a distraction. He it seems a little out of so place famous. to me. Yeah, yeah, he's so famous, yeah. and I'm just like, why he's is he here? Played a Bond villain, man. We, you know, we've done the show and we've done it well without these people. Yeah. Why is he here now? And so I, I, I kind of tune out. I've tuned out every time I've watched this episode when his scene starts and I understand what happens and I can sort of make sense of it in my mind. Well, it's hard to connect him as some big, you know, overseeing evil force because yeah. he doesn't have scenes with all of his, you know, soldiers, you know, who it's go into true. horror houses and, and kill everybody I mean, and they all mark their foreheads. Oh God, I know, you don't even connect him. They're terrifying. He's not. He's just yeah. this charming, smiley old guy that doesn't drink, you know, yeah. who has good lines. And you know him because you've seen him in a, in a million movies before. Right. Playing Gary Glenn Ross. Yeah, he's in tons of he's stuff. He's the guy that uh, Al Pacino sells the, the thing to, and then he tries to get it back at the end. Yeah. The, um, but the, uh, I don't know. There was, uh, I don't know. I don't but know why this season makes me feel like it's letting me down a little bit well, so far. Well, the thing that she is doing, though, is she's trying to bring down... Seriously? Uh, yeah, well, House Tyrell. Marjorie, yeah. yeah. Just, everything is to get Marjorie I'm to sure. break also, Marjorie's I'm dad sure. got killed last night. And Marjorie... Off screen. Dad got killed last night. Yeah, he sat on the country. small council. He was the keeper. Are of you sure he's dead? Well, he's gone now. Yeah, I don't know. If I mean, he, I, I think, think they'll kill just, him next episode. He's just gone. I yeah. don't think there's going to be any. You're just never going to see him again. Again, this is what I think Game of Thrones gets away with that most TV shows yeah. don't get away with. It's, yeah. This is not like Chips from the show when you were young. Remember Chips? <laughs> they, would, they would end with a big smile or high fives at the end <laughs> <laughs> and freeze frame. Amazing. Uh, uh, but like, not making jokes. It was hmm. a serious thing. No, every time they like they, all the bad guys would get caught and be in jail at the end, all the cops would be around laughing, <laughs> and then they'd freeze. And they ended on that. Yeah. That's perfect. That's the, the, other, the other thing is uh, Tobin as the king. I, you know, last night Marjorie's leaving. Oh, yeah. She's oh, yeah. mad because Loras is now in jail yeah. thanks to Cersei, and and she. See, a lot happened. There and when we it. talk about it, a lot happens. So as you're watching, yeah. you feel like, hey, it's just all happening. connectors And now here. Grey Worm and Sir Barrister's dead. Who cares? <laughs> no, but, you know, the thing is, the thing is, I love that scene with Toman and uh, Marjorie when she's leaving. And she's yeah. like, no, I have to be with my family tonight. <laughs> and basically, the translation is, you'll be beating your penis alone oh, with nobody there. I mean, just the manipulation when she's so angry that he's in, uh, in prison. And then in mid-sentence, she changes, my darling. Yeah, you know, because that she was realized that she's coming at him work. too strong. Totally. She's oh, totally man, she is so she's so smart. She's so great. And I, I loved uh, Jora. Yeah, Jora. Jora. And, Jora and uh, Tyrion on the boat, too. He actually knocks him out. I thought that whole scene was fantastic as well because we, we see he you know Tyrion in in uh, you see how dangerous he is yeah. right it's he like totally a maps him up thing. he yeah. just yeah. sees a bunch of details yes. and he puts together a story and he, and he solves the mystery right incredible, there incredible right and so That's the right. only thing that he can do is punch him out yeah. <laughs> and just the right thing <laughs> and he, was, he deserves to get punched out at least once every episode. no but he's right going to see Daenerys could go one of two ways for yeah, him like sure. he he could be he could be in the better position than yes. uh, Jorah so I don't know. I'm excited to see how that goes down. But now that um, Sir Barristan is gone, Sir Barrister, yeah. Sir Barrister yeah. is gone. Yeah, see, too, too many names. Doesn't but matter. now that he's gone, I just feel like maybe he will be welcome. Yeah, of course, he's coming back. Absolutely, so, he's such a strong character, and he's been yeah. with Daenerys the whole time. Not a lot of Daenerys last last night. 
Uh, but I I, we did see, we did want to talk about the Sand Snakes scene with Illyria oh, yeah. from Dorne and the, the way that she's getting another little cult together. Yeah. Two, three cults now are I, going I in the series. Shoes. Oh god, their shoes are too much for what me. Like, why, why, would they, why would they turn up like that? <laughs> they have totally pointy wooden elf yeah. shoes. Yeah, they're think. from uh, Wizard of Oz. <laughs> they're amazing. Maybe. It's, it's such uh, you know costume stuff. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's great. Does the, Razzmatazz. Does, does the strong female character thing, start, is it starting to feel a little cliche? Because there's so many every week. No. And like, here's another group of women, and they're strong too, guys. No, this is a warrior faction. This is, uh, you know, this is all they do is fucking fight, as Bronn says, right? Fuck and fight. Right? Yeah. And and uh, and that's that's what you're going to have. You're going to have warriors. And and uh, the one of the women says that uh, uh, Oberon says she, uh, it doesn't matter if you're male or female. Everybody fights, you yeah. know. And then she spears a guy's buried head. <laughs> that was that. awesome. I'm just worried that it, it could start to feel a little white noisy. Like it too could. many yeah, people. Too many, are yeah, tough too many things. Like we're all tough. Everybody. Else, I don't know. You survive the way Tyrion survived. You're very little, and you're, you're clever. Yeah, Samwell and Tyrion are the only ones that uh, have seemed to have persevered through all of this madness. Does yeah. anybody have any new uh, imitations or impressions of characters mm. this week? You're supposed to be working on those from week to week. Oh, Jesus. I'm still working on my beard. Yes. I've already done some incredible impressions You've done on the show. You've done a good week of uh, beard growing. Good I job. did do a good week yes. of beard growing, yeah. yes. Uh, I, I can't really do any okay. impressions. Okay. No. You got another no one? No and no. no. You got another one for us? from my garden. That's all I have. Uh, that was yeah. not good. Yeah. Can't even practice it, you guys. I just kind of threw it out there. Uh, you got another one? No, I don't have another one. That's no? enough. I, I mean, really, the pressure's off me because I've done two and there are two more people on the Do show. Do a little finger zero. talking to uh, Sansa. I don't want to today. Listen, I'm not your puppet. This, I'll, I'll you're be not Sansa. my Geppetto. Did, I'll be Sansa. He did manipulate her a little bit again yeah. this what about episode. Baelish when he kissed her. Oh, that was Ew. gross. Every time he goes in to kiss her, I'm like, ooh, that's disgusting. That guy's like 100. Yeah. He's just, yeah, gross. He always and, goes in like this. Did you like what, what happened to uh, uh, Peter uh, Baelish's little crony at the whorehouse? This is Peter Baelish's... Oh, yeah, establishment. Yeah, well, punch. There's an, that All was right. good. Okay. So you did the whore, whorehouse uh, keeper yeah. for Lord Baelish. <laughs> this That's is good, Peter Rick. Baelish's establishment. Poof! <laughs> Bloody face. Poof! <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, so he's going to go back now and uh, be really pissed. I'm yeah. gonna be penises. really pissed. Two penises in this episode oh, if you're yeah. keeping score at home. Yeah. Only... One was kind of medium size and one was really little. <laughs> Reminded me of my own. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like a doll's button. Should, should we oh, count the penises and also measure them throughout the season? No. Uh, I think those might be the first two penises of the season. But the greatest <laughs> penis of all for Game of Thrones was Hodor's when we saw him with no pants on. Do you remember oh, that? No. Oh my no. God! It was like a subway footlong. <laughs> but he said on the uh, the Strombo show that it was a, an aesthetic, or uh, a prosthetic, prosthetic. Pro yeah. and also an aesthetic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful aesthetics. Yeah, it's prosthetic. Uh, no, but Melisandre has some nice boobs. She like her boobs nice are. One. Oh I my God! I haven't even seen a woman's boobs in two years. But and like, but those man, boobs are see really nice. Boobs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't. We shouldn't objectify at all. But oh my goodness. My cat she rolls was... over though. Six. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> okay, so, everybody, that's that's good. We're gonna talk. That's what that. You promised some uh, Avengers what? talk. Oh well, no, Blake's uh, not here today. Yeah, we, okay. Blake's not here today. He's he had uh, an emergency outing, so we'll uh, we'll reconvene on Avengers. Talk I'm scared about next week. It's halfway through. This is the halfway mark. Something huge is gonna happen for sure. Yeah. We're gonna see a Lannister and Dennis the Targaryen together. We're gonna to see you starting to learn some of the I names. can't know how to pronounce, I don't know how to pronounce all the a Daenerys. A Dannister and an aesthetic and a prosthetic. <laughs> that was you. I know it was. <laughs> Pronouncing these names is hard. Okay, Come guys, on, everybody I gotta call, that. I gotta call. Bye, yeah. bye, bye. Bye, so, bye, so, bye, so. bye. Six cat boobs. Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> That's what I give this episode. That's my score. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Okay, we'll see you next week. Dick's Basement would like to thank its sponsors, EB Games, Nintendo, Xbox, and Gameloft, makers of Dragon Mania Legends, which you can play for free right now.